God's law, this will be the best law for them, right? This is the law which will be something that is beneficial for them, which will help them to be successful in this life, successful in the hereafter, isn't it? Now, if some people say, but I don't want to follow religion, I don't want to follow a prescribed law, I don't want to worship in a certain times, I don't want to fast, I don't want to give charity, many things. These people, do you really think they're actually loving God? Because and I agree with you. You know why? Because this is the thing. Sometimes, you know, being with God is an intimacy thing, yeah? It's not, I'm going to have, let's say you and me were married, yeah? And you, she, he's my husband, and I'm going to tell him I love him, but I don't do nothing to him. I don't cook for him, I don't do his clothes love. It's the same with, like, with him. God, I love him, but I, I don't pray for him. You're not expressing I don't that love. I don't, I, I don't desire the love. And we need to do that. We need to desire the love. Do so much we all agree the there's a lot of work to do between ourselves yeah, to people who don't believe, mm -hmm. people who made up their own religion, people who worship themselves, people who worship pop stars, yeah. footballers, people who right, or people who don't worship anything at all and they think they are all self-sufficient, right? That's one thing. But between ourselves though, there's one thing that we all need to do is are we really loving the way we should love God? That's right? a good question. Yeah. And that is a, right. That is, an amazing question. right. is there anything that God doesn't like? There's things that God doesn't like. I, but listen, this is my conviction and that's what I think. I don't want to feel like in each one of you in your heads that God hates something or God doesn't like something. That is, I think it's something personal, yeah? Mm. It's, it's literally Passion. something it's personal. It's also written. It's, it's written. also written. Yeah, yeah. But I don't want to put it in a person like, listen, God, hey, no, no, no. Like, God has spoke to me. God has spoke to me. To, to, to do, God has spoken to me. People, God has spoken to me through situations, mm. yeah? So it's like I know in, 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 inside of me that some kind some things God doesn't like me to do. And the I reason, know sometimes I have to go through that. Sure. The reason why I say this, I mean I mean I don't want to apologize for saying this, but it's important to say it. We want to worship God, but within this desire of worship, there are many people who worship God in their own ways which is not acceptable to God or they worship God along with others and they worship God besides God there are many people who do that you know Hindus they worship so many different gods and avatars or semi-gods or demigods they spend their time you know dedicating their whole life some of them to worship God alone um, alone meaning only worship God but instead what they do in this process they might worship a cow thinking this is a representation of God and so on, not knowing that God doesn't approve of that. Or, for example, Christians, I don't know what, whether you are monotheist Christians or Trinitarian Christians, people worship Christ instead of worshipping the God of Christ. Yeah, yeah, this, is, yeah. this, is, this is very important to reflect between us what in our Quran, which came after Christ, right, this book, to Prophet Muhammad he says very clearly that whoever associate partners with God, whether you associate partner with your own self, that, you know, I should be worshipped with God, or you say God has a daughter or a son or a brother or a mother or anything that you associate, God says very clearly, you will never go to paradise and hellfire will be the final destruction because God doesn't forgive that sin. It is one of the greatest sin to ascribe partner to God. God created you, He's alone. He's one and he's only, and then you say, but I'm going to worship that man or that woman or that tree or that anything. So as Christians, what we would like you to discuss and have common terms with, that let us come to worship none but God alone. The God of Moses, of Abraham, of Jacob and Solomon, God of Jesus and God of Muhammad. If you think Jesus is God, then we can have a discussion. Why do you say so? Because he is a mighty messenger of God who came specifically to bring people back to God, not to worship him. What do you believe about him? No, this is the thing. The thing is, we hear, we know only just, there's not only one human in on, on earth. Yeah? We, we are a lot of people in here. And we know the world is literally run by the devil. Are we agreeing with this? Oh, yeah. Not necessarily, I wouldn't. So, I if, we, don't believe if, God it, runs if the it's run by the devil, the devil has limitations. we need to be really strong in our faith. I know just that. If I see a person that is worshipping that tree, and I know it's not right, yeah? I know it's not right. I would pray for that person. I'm not going to condemn that person because that's not my problem. God is the one that do it. He's the judge, not me. So 
I would just I would just go to that person and I'm like, listen, I start praying for that person, fasting for that person, die showing my love to that person until that person seriously have that relationship with God. Yeah? I understand that obviously we believe in Mohammed and that's why we believe in Mohammed as well. That you believe in Jesus too? We believe in Jesus as well. Yeah? But we the thing is I don't want to be aligned like there you go. Jesus is the way and the life and that's that's the way we think Jesus is the way and the life. Yeah? And that's what it says in the Bible. That's why I believe. The only thing, yeah, that we're gonna know what is really happening in our conviction. Listen, this is the this is the, the thing I, I think. You're really faithful to God, yeah? Faithful to God. Regardless if you read the Quran, if you're Buddhist, if you're this, you're faithful to what you do. No one in here knows in the date of judgment how the is gonna happen. No one knows. No one knows what's gonna happen after death. No one knows. No one. No one has been in hell and come back and tell us what happened. No one knows. So we're the only one. We're literally here just living this period of time because we live in eternity. And I know our souls, when you go to sleep, your soul is still awake. Your body's asleep. That's why we could be praying the whole day, but your body's tired. Your body wants to eat, your body wants to do stuff. But it's like we live in just this little time and we live in eternity. And like God, please help me to live this eternal life now. My eternal life starts now. So it's like regardless of what you believe or what you think, I feel like the language our language has to be love. Our language has to be love. And that and that's I, I can understand and appreciate what you were saying, but when it comes to God and his messengers. Are we giving the right of God where it's due? Or are we the example? Because the, one of the crucial, central difference between Muslims and Christians is on the position of the identity of Christ. Do we agree? We believe Christ was born of a virgin. He was a mighty messenger, a prophet of God. He did many miracles with the permission and authority of God. God gave him the permission to do those miracles. But do you think you can do the same? Do you think you can heal people? Do you think you can you can you can heal the blind? You can do you, do you, do you, do you get what I mean? It, I, no, I understand. No, no. You can do it and I believe I can do it. Fair enough, fair enough. But what I'm saying what I'm saying, what I'm saying is when we identify someone, a prophet of God, this is what we say the Christians have I'm not sure whether you are of this uh, denomination of the Christians, Christians generally have extolled and excelled and elevated the status of Jesus Christ, who is an honorable messenger, mighty messenger. You know, the most, you know, you, if a Muslim disrespects and disbelieves in Jesus Christ, he's not even a Muslim. This is how, you know, we have to honor and respect our prophets of God. We make no distinction between our prophets and messengers. God favors some of the others. He makes this decision to me. He spoke to Moses directly. He didn't speak to everyone else directly. There are other prophets, but he didn't speak to them directly. So some he favored on something over the others. So when it comes to the identity of Christ, there are many Christians who have elevated him to the station of saying he is actually God's son. And being God's son, he's actually son of God. That he's actually God himself and requires our worship and gratitude like God does. So God is, has become our father and he has a son and there's a Holy Spirit and then we need to actually worship them all. When if you look at consistently in the times in the past where God sent prophets and messengers to Isaiah, to Jacob, to Solomon, to David, to Moses, God says, I am God and there is none else. Before me there is no God form and after me there will be no other God form. I alone am God and there is no one else. So worship me and serve me only. These are the messages that we get consistently. But here is the problem with the Christian understanding of these things. Christians say no, God isn't the only one. He has a son who is also God. He also requires our worship. This is not the message God sent beforehand. So we say, look, I know you love Christ so much. I mean, I can understand that, but don't elevate him to station of God. Imagine Jewish people elevated Prophet Moses to God and started worshiping him. You would say, that's too much reverence. You can't do that. This is beyond the rights of Moses, who he is. You, you will be committing a serious crime if you make him into a deity and worship him. You can't do that. He is a prophet and that's what he is. 
He's not just an ordinary human being, he's a prophet. Likewise, Christ, if he's elevated, we see the same problem happening. The, like, what I'm going to say right now, like, this has been through years, like years and years about Jesus and about Muhammad and about this, and we're really passionate about Jesus. We're not going to deny it. We're really passionate about Jesus. We know. But this is the thing. The thing is, we, we let's say, I'm passionate about Muhammad, yeah? It's going to be... It's, it's going to be like what you're passionate about Jesus and passionate about Mohammed, vice versa. This is the thing. How is your heart when you go home? How do you feel when you go home? Do you do you feel like empty? Do you feel like that, that you, you literally? This is the thing. Everybody in the in in the street, everybody with their families, everybody with the friends. We show this mask with this face, with this face with the, the, the religion. Like, okay, I don't believe. Oh, I'm an atheist. No, I'm Buddhist. Or I believe in Jesus. Or I believe in Muhammad. Or you should do this. You should do that. You don't do this. You don't do that. This is not what we do. When we go home, we really are what we really are. And then you go home, and like your heart is destroyed. You have problems in, in, inside of yourself, what your dad did to you because they beat you up, what your mom did to you because they abandoned you, what your parents did to you, or what your uncle did to you, or what your aunt did to you, and you, you have that inside of you. And that is killing you inside. And that's, that's the thing that is literally like stopping us for showing love to someone else, for showing what, what, what our faith. That's literally why it's stopping us. What would you feel if Muslims elevated Prophet Muhammad to God? Listen, do you know what I feel? I would feel like and started worshiping him. You are an individual, I am an individual, and I respect. If you wear skinny jeans and I will and I will, and I and I, will, and I will wear a skirt, it's like regardless, we're humans and we're here just to help each other. Why would we help each other? What would you think about it? Like, what would you think about that? About that, if you believe it. If some Muslims elevated Prophet Muhammad وسلم, to a station of even a deity and God and says we need to worship him along with God. This is the thing. I'm going to be honest with you. Yeah? Being more theological on this side, because right now I'm talking more like a spiritual side. Yeah? Mm -hmm. But being more theological, what I have read in the Bible, yeah? this is the thing. We believe that Jesus came, and we believe that Jesus came to die on the cross, and to die for our sins. And that's, that's what I believe. And I hope that everybody respects that, even if they don't believe it. Yeah, even, even we disagree, like, this is what you believe. That man didn't exist, blah, blah. I believe that. And I believe he he died on the cross. And there's this physical evidence. If you want to check it, just go and check it, because there's actually physical evidence that that happens. And he died for our sins. And if he's telling me that he died for our sins, that means that I'm clean because of the blood of Jesus. Yeah? And this is the thing. That's why I'm passionate about Jesus. That's why I'm passionate. But you're not addressing well, the point about exactly. whether he's actually man or superman, like superhuman, and God. In the Bible says that he is, he, he is, he says, this is a mystery. This is not because I know, because I have studied theology. theology this is a mystery, yeah? There's this three in one, yeah? It's like you. You're three in one. You have your body, your soul, and your spirit. And what about yeah? my mind? Your body, and your soul, mind? and your spirit. Well, your mind is your soul. Where everything is, is there. Your emotions, your... Well, that's, that's, I think, I don't know if it's true. I don't know. I will ask God because he's the one that knows... I believe I only two. And it just, that's, that's a soul and a body. Exactly. I believe there is three, which is fine, it's Never fine, I'm not, I'm not arguing with that. But this is the thing, I believe if in the Bible says that God, God, God sent his son, he said that he sent his son and mean? his son is God and God is What the, do you understand by the word God has a son? What do you really, really understand when God says I am sending my son, what does he mean? Are you saying God has a son like we have sons and daughters? Um, this is the thing. How do you yeah? understand that? That's what I'm saying. It's a mystery. It's like, I don't have all the answers. I can understand that in the Bible says that God sent his son through a, through a woman that she got, she was pregnant. It was the only woman on earth that got pregnant by the, not by the deal, by the Holy Spirit, yeah? And it's literally, in, the, in, a, few, in a few verses in the Bible, like, he says that he's God, and then he says like, 
he's the son of God, but then he says, Jesus is God, and then he says, like what you said before, God only, it's, and you worship God only. And just to, just to, you know I mean? just to, to, I mean, sorry to interject, but um, we hear from, you know, friends and Christians who come here, that this is what he actually says, that Jesus is God in the scripture. And I've scrutinized the scripture, the scripture for years and years and years. I've discussed with countless number of Christians. There is no such verse. It's all implied, all deducted. So if you ask, let me think about this. First thing is about when we talk about God incarnates his son, human being, as a human being, comes to this is that God's son incarnates in a human human being and he's on earth. Now if God because the Son of God is also God, according to this belief, right? He's on this earth, and what happens? Does he tell people, I've come down, and I'm God? Because you'd expect God, when he comes down, the matter is all settled. He's not going to walk around and people think, who is this guy over there? Hmm. Is he Elijah? Is he John the Baptist? Is he Christ? Or is he a prophet? Or is he a healer, like honey, the circle drawer? There are many people who were around at that time, okay? Or is he just a rebel, you know, trying to trying to create problems within the vicinity and then we have to get the Romans uh, involved to sort out the order? Because politically, this is some problem maker, right? So, what do you expect if God came down? I mean, I don't believe this universe will be even contained if God came down, it would crumble to dust. When Moses wanted to see God and God says, you can't see me, but if you see that mountain still stand, Perhaps you can see me. The mountain crumbled to dust. Moses fell in this crowd unconscious. When he woke up, he realized, okay, you know, I shouldn't even ask this thing because this earth, this this world cannot contain God. The world will be destroyed. It's not even capable of it. But anyway, you believe as Christians, God came down on earth, his son came out in being. What you would expect to see is he to make it clear that he's God rather than having an identity crisis of some kind and says, nobody knows who he is. Sometimes he asks, do you know who I am? And people say, oh, are you a prophet? Are you Christ? Are you Messiah? Or are you this, are you that? And he's keeping people in suspense. Now, when he walks around, what does people think about him? He's doing some things. He's healing the blind, the leper, you know, he's doing all these miraculous activities of healing. He's actually bringing people from their problems, even getting the demons out, right? So what people come along, they see from the, the, from Galilee over there, from Nazareth over there, they don't come say, oh, God has come to earth. God is here with us, everyone. Oh no, let's worship him. They come along here, just to make this point, and you cannot respond. God, he, he comes you along. You don't have to raise your hands. You can speak. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No point. You, you know, I, I apologize for you. No, you no, even no, have no, to no, raise your hands. No problem. So you know. I don't yeah, yeah, sure, sure. <laughs> What we see is people saying, oh, there's a prophet that has come around, going around healing. So the impression people had that he is like a human being, a prophet, or some people say he was a messiah, that God will send a political deliverer who is going to do all these things. Why is it that you don't see, like in the Old Testament times, God tells people, I am God and you shall have no other God besides me. Serve me only, worship me only, I am the only true God. If Jesus Christ came as God, did he make that clear to his mother, his brother, his family, his friends, his disciples, the Roman, the Roman soldiers? Did he make it clear to every single people that was there? Instead, instead we said, I have only come to the lost sheep. No, I'm not only come. I'm only sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. That's not what you expect God to say. So why is this? Well, that was long. Um, basically, listen. Yeah. God sent his son, yeah. And obviously, if we see God right now, we see him. We travel. We literally travel. But God was making flesh. He was he was he was us. He was like us. But he was he was he has